Hey. Let me ask you something. You mad, bro? Hmm? You mad, bro? You know, with the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble coming very rapidly, Anger. People who are struggling with anger and letting go and bitterness. Now, don't get me wrong. It is okay to have what is called righteous indignation. What is righteous indignation? Righteous indignation is you getting upset about anything that is contrary to this book, the King James Bible, the real Bible. Okay? For an example, it is okay to become angry at Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. It is okay to be angry with that. It's okay to be angry with the fact that all the daughters of the whore, Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, and the Jesuits, it's okay to be angry with the fact that they are corrupting people's minds, raping people's minds, and leading them astray in false teaching and error and apostasy and all that stuff. Yes. Yes. It's okay to be angry when someone curses and takes our uh, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, his name in vain. It's okay. Okay. All right? However... That doesn't justify you, Christian, and note that I'm looking at myself when I say this. Hi! Hi! Okay? That doesn't justify you, when you get angry, acting like a lost heathen. What makes us different as Christians? Oh, he's a pretty nice guy, but when he's mad, ooh. And how quick-tempered are you? Hmm? Hmm? How quick-tempered are you? And what happens in that quick temper of yours? Huh? Can you control your big mouth? Oh! Oh, Brad. Oh, yeah. I'm going to step on some toes today with this. Including mine own. Because there have been times, as a saved man, that I have gotten pretty angry. <laughs> My lovely, beautiful wife, if she were here, um, she, she would be a test to that. It's like, yeah, Brad... You've gotten pretty angry and you acted like a 12-year-old. But what's worse is when you as a saved man, as a Christian, Christian man or woman, saved, born again, sealed unto the day of redemption, that when you let your anger, when you let your anger get the best of you, the worst thing is when the Lord's like, you know, Brad, I want you to have childlike faith on me. It's not okay that you behave as a child, a 10-year-old, when you're angry. That's the worst of all. And see, if you're saved and born again, King James Bible-believing Christian, you understand that. This video is not for lost people. This is for the brethren and sisters out there. Again. You mad, bro? Get your King James Bible. Now, this video could be very long, very detailed, very in-depth. I do have to go to work. And I don't have a car, so I have to walk to work. And today I'm going to be walking in the rain. <laughs> I do have a poncho, a really good one, though. But anyway. Got a bunch of scriptures here that we're going to go through. We're going to deal with this. Like I said, I'm going to step on a few of your toes. 
and mine as well. And, you, and remember this, Christian. God is not pointing, excuse me, God is not pointing a gun at your head to do anything. Okay? Neither is the devil pointing a gun at your head, making you do anything. You, especially as a Christian, cannot say, well, it's their fault that I flew off the handle. What? What, the woman did give you of the fruit of the tree and I did eat? Or you as a woman, the devil made me do it? Yeah. Remember when you're pointing at people, how many fingers are pointing back at you? Huh? Oh, well, if they wouldn't have said this, they wouldn't. Remember, Christian, at the end of the day, no one is responsible for the way you behave in any given situation except you yourself. Hi. Hi. I got to remember that myself. Okay? Oh, if he wasn't so stupid. Oh, if she wasn't so contrite. If she wasn't such this, that. I wouldn't have done, nah, see, that's that old man. That's that Adamic nature, which is still in, you know, because we're in the skin suit, you know, yeah. But at the end of the day, as a Christian, especially, you can't be pointing at someone else and blaming them for the way you behave. Hi. Hi. Turn in your King James Bible, the real Bible, God idiot notes, to 2 Corinthians. We're going to get your Bible, the King James Bible, the real Bible. I say that in all my videos because you know where I stand when it comes to the Bible. There's only one. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 21. Follow me along in the scriptures. We're going to be going through a lot of scriptures, a little uh, couple one verse references, but go there with me. Okay? Your Bible is going to get a workout today, this morning. Okay? Let's go. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 21. This is for saved, born again, King James Bible believing Christians. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 17 on to verse 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. You might not make videos. You might not pass out tracts. You might not stand on the street with a sign saying that Jesuits created COVID-19. Okay? You might not uh, stand on the street with your Bible preaching to whoever will listen. But we are all within the ministry of reconciliation. Remember that, Christian. You have no excuse. To wit, verse 19, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Hey, did, did, let's read this again. To wit, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Are you still stuck in the past? Let's continue. And hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. <laughs> now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Imputed righteousness, something that lost people 
Catholics, coadjutors, Jesuits, infiltrators can never understand imputed righteousness. No, you got to trust on your belief, right? No, you got to trust on maybe the fact that you called on the name of the Lord. And again, calling on the name of the Lord just happens. It's a natural thing when you are broken of yourself. You call. It just happens. It just happens. Okay. Okay. It it's it just happens. Shh. Okay. Imputed righteousness. Who are you trusting on? Yourself or the Lord Jesus Christ, our God and Father? Who are you trusting on? Philippians chapter 3. Not Thessalonians, Brad. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now listen to me. It's okay to remember from whence ye came. It is. I used to be a sodomite. Okay? I used to be a drug addict, a liar, a thief, an adulterer. Okay? I didn't, not with my wife, but I, never mind, never mind. You can watch my testimony video. Okay? It's healthy to every once in a while to recollect from whence he came. But it is not in any way healthy to you as a Christian if you dwell on the things that are in your past and keep going back to it. Oh, I don't do that, Brad. Really? Really? What consumes you the most? The things that happened to you before? Again, you mad, bro? Sister, you mad? You better. Now, Psalms. Psalms 37. Now, we're going to be going through uh, here. We're going to be in Psalms and a, um, a lot of it in the Proverbs. Okay, there are going to be some singular verse references. Okay, so if you got to pause, do so. You need to see and read this. Follow me along. Okay, you want to read the context on your own time? Go for it. Get into this book, please. But for sake of time, because I do got to go to work. Okay, Psalm 37, verses 8 on to verse 22. Go there. Psalm 37, verses 8 under verse 22. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, like we're doing to be called up, caught up for the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be, yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. 
See, if you're constantly anger, uh, angered, angry, quick to temper, bitter, do you do you really have peace within you? The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. Ha <laughs> ha! Hi, look at what goes on here in, on YouTube, of all places. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. Get a load of that one. The wicked have drawn out the sword, and have bent their bow, to cast down the poor needy, and to slay such as be of upright conversation. See, another tactic of infiltrators. They will, uh, with the big smile and a very pleasant countenance, will do what? They'll draw out the sword and take out the bow and hit you and shoot arrows at you, trying to get you out of your place. And it's your fault if you fall for it. No one else's. Remember that. Never forget that. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Get a load of that one! We're going through some stuff right here, right now. But once we caught up, <laughs> yeah, bye-bye, cruel world. I hope you get saved before. <clears throat> Verse 19, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish. And the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume. Into smoke shall they consume away. Never forget that, Christian. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again. <laughs> but the righteous but the righteous sheweth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth. And they that are cursed of him shall be cut off. Never forget that. Never, never forget that. Okay? Now, Proverbs, or Proverbs, whatever you wish. Proverbs chapter 12. Here's where the bulk of what we're going to be looking at will be. Prepare yourself. <clears throat> Proverbs 12, 12 through 16. Go there. If you got to pause it, do it. Proverbs 12. 12 through 16. The wicked desireth the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. And the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. The way of a fool, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God, is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. Proverbs 14 16 and 17 Proverbs 14 16 and 17 A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. Verse 17, he that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. Oh, you're so quick to get angry, ain't you? At anything and everything. Christian, 
He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly. And hi, I've done that myself. And also look at verse 29. And remember this. He that is slow to wrath is, is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. And hi, I failed at that myself. Proverbs 15. One and two. Fifteen. One and two. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. And also look at verse 18. A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. Again, I ask you, you mad, bro? Sister, you mad? Proverbs 16. Verses 29 on to verse 31. Proverbs 16, verses 29 on to verse 31. A violent man enticeth his neighbor, and leadeth him into the way that is not good. He shutteth his eyes to devise froward things. Moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. Excuse me, it was to 32. The hoary head is a crown of glory. If it be found in the way of righteousness, let's read to uh, verse 33. Beg your pardon. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Get a load of that. Tough guy. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Look at verse 32 again. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. See, you get angry just that quick about anything and everything, Christian, man, woman, You're acting like a lost heathen. We're supposed to be different, remember? Hi, hi. Speaking to myself as well, okay? <laughs> when it comes to this, you ain't going to call me a hypocrite, boy. So, uh, Proverbs 19, one verse. One verse. Proverbs 19, one verse. Verse 11. The discretion of a man deferreth his anger. And it, is, and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. Get a load of that and let that roll around in your head a little bit. Proverbs 22. Verses 24 on to verse 25. Proverbs 22, verses 24 and 25. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. Anger is a snare. Think about it. If you have an anger problem, and bitterness, and can't let go of things, and are that quick-tempered, that's a snare to you. And how convenient the enemies of our Lord, our Father, Jesus Christ, and the true gospel, how easy they can pick up on that and snare you by you allowing yourself to get angry. Think about that. 
Proverbs 29, verses 22 and 23. Twenty-nine, verses twenty-two and twenty-three. An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. Look at that. Are you looking at verse twenty-three? See, I have on many times confessed to all of you, even to my enemies, a fault of mine. I have a pride problem. I struggle with pride. And when you come across people who say, I'm a very humble person, I snuff my pride. That's a sign that you do got a pride problem. And you're not allowing the Lord to deal with it. Anyone who says that kind of stuff, you beware of them. And if they are a brother, pray for them. Verse 23, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. It's nothing but pride that keeps people from getting saved. It's pride that makes you trust in your belief and not on the man. Christ Jesus, you know, our Lord, God, and Savior, our Father. Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 9. Here's one verse. Actually, no, we'll just read the one. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 9. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. Are, are you, did you follow me along? Did you, I, you had to pause it, I'm sure. Uh, for anger resteth in the bosom of what? Fools. Bible has quite a bit to say about anger, doesn't it? And like I said at the beginning of this video, there is such a thing as righteous indignation, which corresponds with the Bible, the King James Bible, the real Bible, thank you, not off of your feelings. Go to Ephesians now, chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 on to verse 32. Now watch this. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 on to verse 32. You want to read the context about the uh, changed life after salvation? Um, go ahead and read from 17 on to verse 32 on your own time. Like I said, I do got to go to work. So this is going to be as quick as possible. But. Ephesians 4, verses 26 on to verse 32. Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. What does that mean? Settle it. Settle it. Get over it. Don't go to sleep angry. Hi. Hi, I confess a fault to you, and even to you, mine enemies. I have gone to bed at night angry. My wife and I both have gone to bed angry with each other. And you know what happens when you wake up and try to pray and speak with the Lord and get into his word? It snares you. Hello, what did we read in Proverbs? A snare? That's why when you get angry... Don't sin, you know. Even though I have sinned in my anger. Hi, and so have you. But let it go. Don't go to bed angry. Let it go. Go to the Lord. Deal with it. You and the Lord together. 
And if not, he's going to deal with it himself. And, oh boy. You, you sure won't forget it when he does. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Verse 27. Right there, talking about the snare. Neither give place to the devil. See, when you're angry and you can't control yourself and you shout, start shouting things, spouting off at the mouth, you're giving place to the devil for sin. Okay? Let's continue. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Now, look at verse 29 and compare them with verses 26 and 27. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. I had a text message this morning that I sent to a brother who was struggling. I messed up the text, but I corrected it, obviously, and asked the Lord for forgiveness. You're sealed. If you're saved and born again, you're sealed on to the day of redemption. Now, let me step on a few toes and mine as well. When you get angry, do you cuss? Oh, I can't help it. Yeah. It's not your fault, right? You get angry and you start swearing? Oh, but it's not your fault, because this guy made me angry. Huh? Yeah. Give me a break. Now look, hey, I've said, I've confessed this to you before. I dropped a couch on my toe a while back. Blood all over, and I cussed. Okay? Yes. After I do it, I repent immediately. And that guilt, that shame that comes, that's something else. That's pretty heavy, ain't it? You have no excuse. Oh, I can't help myself. Bologna sandwiches. Bologna sandwiches. You get angry like that and you start cussing? That now, like, look. I'm not questioning any uh, this is like I said, this is for saved brethren. I'm not questioning your salvation at all. I'm not saying that. And don't you put words in my mouth as if I am. No. What I'm questioning is your fellowship with the Lord. Hi. Mine own as well with what we have already looked at. Okay? Yes. I'm looking at myself right now, too, so you know. But you start cussing when you're angry. <laughs> you better get a hold on that, man. Woman. Woman. You better get a hold on that. Because look at verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. The Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that spirit that is within you. Uh, he hears your cussing. He sees what you see. Why are you going to subject the Lord to your cursing? To what you put before your eyes? To what you think? Oh, I can't help it. Excuses, excuses. It's always someone else's fault, right? Don't give me that stuff, man, woman. Don't you get, don't you feed me that. <laughs> don't you get off your high horse. Let's continue. Let all bitterness and wrath 
and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Violently put that stuff away. We slip. Yes, we we stumble. Yes, I ain't talking about that. Have you listened to this? Have you watched this? I ain't saying that. But is it habitual with you? Does it come up just like that? Especially when you're angry, huh? Yeah. And you excuse it, don't you? Yeah. Better be careful. And you might say you don't care. Look at me. Okay, look at me. Is there something wrong with you? You mad, bro? You bitter? Verse 32. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And very quickly, this is not part of my notes, go to Luke chapter 17. This was part of my morning devotional reading. Luke 17. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Luke 17, verses 1 on to verse 4. Then said he unto the, unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn to, again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Note that it says in verse 3, If thy brother, that doesn't mean for today, in the time of the Gentiles, the Christian dispensation, that you hold a grudge. Why? Lest you gain a snare to your soul. A snare. Anger and bitterness is a snare, beloved. And very quickly, back in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, let, uh, 31, excuse me, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Bitterness. Hebrews chapter 12, one verse, 15. Actually, let's read verses 14 and 15. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12 is written onto another dispensation for the time uh, for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, a little instruction in righteousness never hurt nobody, boy. Uh, verses 14 and 15. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Remember Shimon the sorcerer, or whatever his name was in Acts, in the book of Acts, okay, who was in the gall of bitterness, who believed, but wasn't broken. Peter said unto him, I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness. Again, I ask you, sister, brother, you mad, bro? Finally, Colossians chapter 3. 
Colossians chapter 3, verses 8 on to 13. Colossians chapter 3, verses 8 on to verse 13. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. We're going to slip, we're going to fall, hi, hi. But put these things away. And don't you dare try to excuse your anger as well if they hadn't. No. Righteous, even in righteous indignation, you're not supposed to behave like a lost heathen. Okay, let's continue. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, Barbarian, Scythian, bond, or free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Forbearing one another. Forbearing one another. I get angry. So do you. And sometimes them words come to my mind, which is still sin. But our Lord is merciful and gracious, long-suffering. I What are you angry about? What are you bitter about? What? Are you pressing forward or are you stuck back here? Are you allowing the new man to shine forth? Or does the old man more often than not win? Remember, remember, as a Christian, don't you dare make excuses for yourself. That's what lost people do. They make excuses. If he hadn't said this, if she hadn't have done that, if I, if they hadn't, they hadn't, they hadn't. It's always someone else's fault. If you hadn't said that, oh, if you wouldn't have messed up. What's wrong with you? Sister, brother, what's wrong with you? You know, there comes a time... The more you walk with the Lord, the longer you walk, the more you know him through his word, the King James Bible, the real Bible, that, that there has to come a time in your life as a Christian. There has to. When the excuses stop. There has to come a time in your life like that. When you can't blame other people. When you won't blame other people for the way you behave. 
What's wrong with you? Get over it. Get into prayer. Speak to the Lord about it. And guess what? Why don't you ask him for chastening? Oh, I do. What are you afraid of? For whom he loves, he rebukes and chastens. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Ask for chastening. Ask for rebuke. What are you afraid of? And you know what? If you don't get it, you, you, you got some bigger problems than just your temper. Brad, you're getting mad now. Yeah, I am. Sure. I have, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I have real little patience sometimes with people who make excuses. I really do. But see, I try to be meek about it, forbearing one another, loving one another. Maybe you should try it sometime. Okay? I got to go. I got things to do before I go to work. I'm going to try to upload this. Apparently, they changed the uh, uploading thing on YouTube, so we'll see what happens. I love you. I'll see you in my next video whenever or whatever that may be. That's not up to me. That's up to the Lord. Okay? Y'all have a good day. Bye-bye.